Time is running out for Mariano Rajoy, a Spanish president. He's set to be ousted from power tomorrow, and the Catalan parties, along with the main Basque one in the Spanish Congress, have played a crucial role. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Y le anuncio que desde la discrepancia vamos a apoyar esta moción de censura para poner fin a la etapa de Mariano Rajoy. No porque apoyemos sus políticas, nuestro sí a Sánchez es un no a Rajoy. Nuestro sí, en definitiva, es un no. Creemos que respondemos a lo que mayoritariamente demanda la ciudadanía vasca y al mejor ejercicio de la responsabilidad votando sí. You just heard it. The Catalan pro-independence parties Esquerra and Piricat and the Basque Nationalist Party have said no to Mariano Rajoy today and their votes have an immediate result. The removal of the Spanish government, the one which removed the Catalan cabinet last October and then set harsh measures in the country, stripping it of its self-rule. Now Spain is facing an unprecedented political crisis while direct rule in Catalonia is still in force. A vote of no confidence has never before been successful in the Congress, but now it is set to pass, and the votes of the Socialists and Unidos Podemos will also contribute to Spain having a new president in the coming days, Pedro Sánchez of the Socialist Party. The vote will take place tomorrow, but the debate of no confidence against Rajoy started quite early this morning today. Only a week ago, almost nobody could have guessed what happened today in the Spanish Parliament. The political drama unfolded when Spain's ruling People's Party was convicted in a major corruption scandal, the Gertel case. Socialist leader Pedro Sánchez pledged to oust Mariano Rajoy as president. And today came the moment of truth. The opposition leader addressed the other parties in the chamber aiming to secure their votes in order to dethrone Rajoy. The larger parties had already laid their cards on the table. The left-wing Podemos party supported the motion. The liberal Ciutadans party was against it. That left Rajoy's future in the hands of Catalan and Basque parties, and Sánchez made a point of reaching out to them. Por eso, señorías, el cuarto objetivo de nuestro programa de estabilidad consistirá en restablecer los puentes con todas y cada una de las comunidades autónomas y sentar las bases que nos permitan normalizar las relaciones e iniciar el diálogo entre el gobierno de España y el nuevo gobierno de Cataluña. Sánchez and the pro-independence parties joined forces against a common enemy, but theirs was an unlikely alliance. The socialist leader backed Rajoy when he imposed direct rule on Catalonia following a declaration of independence last October. He has also been a blatant detractor of Catalonia's new president, something that Mariano Rajoy reminded him of. Torra no es más que un racista al frente de la Generalitat. No es ni más ni menos que el Lepen de la política española. Jamás le habrán escuchado esta suerte de afirmaciones al actual presidente del gobierno de España. Jamás. In a surprise announcement, Sánchez said he would keep Rajoy's budget despite voting against it last week. Many saw this as a wink to the Basque country. The reason? The bill provided major financial incentives for the region. When the parliament met in the afternoon, President Mariano Rajoy was no longer in the chamber. His empty chair left many wondering whether he would announce his resignation, but he refused to step down. The turn would eventually come for the Basque and Catalan parties to announce their verdict. First, it was Peter Catt. Then, it was the Basques. Finally, Esquerra Republicana confirmed what many deemed as inconceivable. Rajoy's rule was coming to an end. The debate also had speakers against the vote of no confidence. Some regional Spanish parties didn't back Sánchez, but the most relevant voice against him, apart from Rajoy himself, was Albert Rivera, the leader of Ciudadans. His party, and Podemos, which backs Sánchez, will now play a very relevant role for the future of Spain's governance. Rivera is pushing for a snap election as soon as possible. El señor Rajoy tiene una última oportunidad, una última para parar la moción de censura que él debería haber parado convocando elecciones, que es presentar su dimisión. During the debate, Pedro Sánchez pledged fresh dialogue with Catalonia. In the past few weeks, the Catalan president, Kim Torra, has also asked for talks with his Spanish counterpart. So a meeting might be close, but with an unexpected interlocutor on the Spanish side. Today, President Torra asked for dialogue with Spain again, and he asked businessmen to help him achieve his goal. He made these remarks in the Circle de Economía organization's high-profile annual meeting. In a few days, things will move along in Catalonia. 
The Spanish government, still led by the People's Party, green-lighted Torres' new ministers for the Catalan government today. They are set to take office in the coming days, and pushing Spain to a new relationship with Catalonia will be a top priority on the agenda. Catalunya vol una nova relació amb Espanya, de tu a tu. I la mateixa llibertat que volem pel nostre país la volem per l'estat espanyol. Tant de bo en aquests dies que Espanya es troba en un moment de crisi política profunda, sàpiguen trobar una sortida que els faci més lliures. On our show we've often covered the discussion on freedom of expression happening in the country. Today we saw a new testimony in court, but for a familiar defendant, Tony Alba, a Catalan humorist and actor. Tony Alba testified in court today, again. He's being investigated for statements he made on social media, which the Spanish prosecutor deems as offensive. Alba himself reiterated that he only wanted to make people laugh, something he also said when he testified for a similar reason some months ago. He is in fact very well known for imitating popular figures, such as the former Spanish king Juan Carlos. This is part of a larger conversation of freedom of expression taking place in the country shortly after arrest warrants were issued against rapper Valtonic, whose whereabouts are currently sí, unknown, sí, que... sentenced to years in prison for the content of his lyrics. For Alba, continuing to speak out is crucial. We have to say what we always think, especially in the freedom of expression, the words, as I said the other day, do not kill the pictures, do not kill the scripts, the articles, the paintings, the art, do not kill anyone. Moving on. Poverty continues to be an issue affecting countries the world over, and Catalonia is no different. A report released today does not paint a pretty picture of the situation. Thousands of people in Catalonia are living on the breadline. Even in a time of economic recovery, poverty remains rife. Entire families find themselves living on the breadline, doing their best to make ends meet, finding shelter where they can. According to a recent survey carried out by volunteers, there are more than 3,000 people living on the streets of Barcelona. And the main obstacle in the way of those trying to escape extreme poverty? Finding adequate housing. This was one of the main conclusions of a report presented today by Caritas, a religious charity that dedicates itself to helping people living on the edge of society. And according to Caritas, more needs to be done. Nosaltres constatem una millora de la situació econòmica, però també constatem que hi ha un col·lectiu de persones que no se'n beneficien d'aquesta millora. Un fet diferencial de la pobresa a Barcelona és la manca d'habitatge social. I en aquest sentit, demanem que hi hagi un acord de totes les forces polítiques que es comprometin a construir habitatge social. The report's findings paint a dire picture. More than half of the families the charity helped are living in poverty. Their homes, nothing more than makeshift huts, subletted properties, vehicles or shelters. And often they face eviction by the police. In 2017, Caritas attended to over 20,000 people living in vulnerable situations in Barcelona. Ten years ago, the figure was less than half that. Rafting, kayaking, canyoning and hiking. These are just some of the adventure sports you can do in the northeast of Catalonia near the Pyrenees. And with summer just around the corner, their popularity is growing. Whether they be on land, in the air or on water, bookings for these kinds of sports are forecast to increase by 5% this year, reaching more than 700,000. Last year the sector generated nearly 100 million euros for the Lleida region. Just like last year, rafting continues to be the most popular activity. So as the weather gets warmer, what better way to enjoy it than by heading to the mountains? Earlier this week, we told you about the upcoming festival to get ready for, Primavera Sound. It kicked off this week with international concerts. As it begins to get into full swing, it promises to be a fun weekend for many people. Let's take a look at how it started. Summer may officially begin on June 21st, but festival season in Catalonia has already started and this week saw the 18th edition of one of the biggest ones, Primavera Sound. Held at the outdoor Barcelona Parc del Forum venue, the wide variety of performances will run until this Sunday. Yesterday, concert goers were able to attend free of charge and enjoy everything from local talent Maria Arnal and Marcel Vallès to well-known names playing far from home like Wolf Parade and Javier Amena. From the UK, the festival also saw the performance of Scottish band Bell and Sebastian, who played a wide range of material from the mid-90s to their latest releases, 
as well as spiritualized with orchestra and choir. This is the very first year that Primavera Sound joined in on a new protocol, named We Will Not Stay Silent Against Sexual Assault in Private Nightlife Spaces. This measure, put forth by the Barcelona City Council and pioneer in all of Spain, aims to give visibility and solutions to any form of sexual assault through an information point with a staff on hand. As for the music, the best is yet to come. The lineup for the coming days includes such musical giants like Arting Monkeys, Bjork, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and The National. Over 200 artists will play to an audience that organizers will hope will number in the hundreds of thousands. We now move on to another kind of festival, but this time a very traditional one. This doesn't mean that it's less intense than Primavera Sound though. Fire, a lot of fire, is featuring in the first big day of the Patum in Berdiga, northern Catalonia. This element is very iconic in all kinds of celebrations in the country, but it's not the only one. Music and characters represented by figures dancing are also typical for the Patum and many other spring and summer festivals. This party has been part of UNESCO's World Intangible Heritage List since 2005, but the festivities aren't over yet, as we'll show you tomorrow. To finish off today, some months ago we told you about a drought alert due to lack of rain, but after the many heavy showers we've seen so far this spring, this has dramatically changed in many areas of the country, one of them being the confluence between the Segre and Cinca rivers. Authorities have warned of the increase in flow, but as long as it's not dangerous, the landscape is there to be enjoyed. Bye for now, and see you tomorrow.